Hey guys, welcome back. We're getting together and uh, doing another live stream here. Um, hopefully if a couple people join in. Most people just watch these after the fact, and that's awesome. Um, really, I'm just trying to build up an audience and put out more videos. Um, I kind of felt like these videos sucked, but I was watching the first one the other day, and it was actually pretty good. So maybe they don't suck. I don't know. You tell me. Um... Uh, we have a ton of really cool stuff going on. I'm super excited about um, all the different projects I got going on. Um, we're still finishing up a few things. Um, I've got this Selmer guitar right back here. Um, just, you know, going through all the fret work. The setup work and fret work by hand is just incredibly detailed work. And uh, one of the ways that uh, manufacturers and a lot of shops that can afford it go is they purchase a Plex system. And uh, if you haven't looked at what a Plex is, you know, check it out on YouTube. There's some awesome videos. Um, but essentially what it is is a, it's a CNC machine that probes the frets and uh, it determines where to cut material and, and very accurately cuts that material. Um, so that's something I'm actually looking into doing. I, uh, a Plex machine is, you know, upwards of $60,000. I just found out that there was one here in the, in the city that I live in, and that's really cool, but... Um, still, you know, like a $60,000 machine, uh, the people that own them can't afford to charge less than, you know, $250 for a Plex job. And, you know, if you can get a Plex job on your instrument, I would advise you do it. Uh, it just makes for a fantastically playable instrument. But, so I'm investigating the, uh, the ways that I can, uh, use the Plex-like technology to, uh, in, um, improve my fretwork. And I've been writing some scripts for Mach 3 that uh, accomplish the probing and uh, surfacing um, for frets. And hopefully I can uh, come up with some stuff that just makes my fret work a lot more accurate in the future. So that's one of the things I'm looking into. Um, and, and faster, too. That's really the key. I'd like to keep doing work for the low cost that I do work for. Um, and just make it easier for me to do that work. Um, so... That's what we're doing with that. Um, it's really exciting. Um, if you're not a Patreon member, check that out. I'm, I'm sure I'll be putting up these scripts on uh, Patreon for the Patreon members. Um, that's probably the, be the exclusive way to get them um, if you're interested in that kind of Plex stuff. And I'll be making some videos coming up on that. Um, the Selmer is getting very close to done, so we'll be doing a video on the completion of that. The Guarneri violin is very close to being done. I'll be doing a completion video on that one. Um, and then we're just going to continue working on this 335. I've also got uh, three bases that um, I'm building right now for uh, for customers. And uh, those are going to be awesome. You'll see videos on those. Um, I'm doing uh, right now. I know most of the videos that have been coming out lately have been more about uh, historical content with me doing, uh, you know, overdubbed, vo um, you know, voiceover stuff. And I kind of like that um, style, but I wanted to get back more to the roots of instructional um, on videos on how I do this stuff. So the next bass neck video, which I love making bass necks, it's awesome, um, is going to be just really in-depth. I also had uh, someone... Uh, uh, put up a question on one of the uh, very first live streams here about, you know, kind of 
Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're doing here, um, I kind of started with a lot of stuff already there. Um, and I don't generally do beginner content, <laughs> um, but I think um, tomorrow, hopefully I'll hop on and do a video. Um, it might be kind of a longer video, but a video that just really goes, um, hopefully pretty much start to finish um, making a neck. So um, drawing a neck in Fusion 360. But anyways, today, <laughs> Let's just, that was a lot of stuff, I know. Um, but t today, uh, I need a sip of my mineral water here because that was uh, quite a bit of talking. Okay, so today we're back doing uh, the ES335, and one of the complications that we've gotten ourselves into is we've got a model at this point that looks really good, but when we go to mill these parts, um, how do we do that? So let's hop over into Fusion and get started. Okay, so here we are, and uh, this is one of the really awesome features of Fusion 360 is the parametric capability. And basically what that means is that I can go back and forth in time on this timeline down here on the bottom and manipulate the model um, to suit my needs. And um, that's, you know, really innovative way to think about CAD and CAM. And one of the things I don't think people think about is that you can also use this for CAM. As, as well as CAD. So um, so if you look at this, um, I, I was thinking there's a couple of ways to go about um, milling these parts. And really, um, I was gonna just cut a slice off of this and make it, make the back and the top into just flat faces where this was. And I've seen that done a few times, but I thought it be, might be more interesting. Um, I mean, what if we just make this part and then make a top in the back and just glue them in like that. I mean, we have a CNC machine, we can make this very accurately. But one of the problems we face is that, okay, I have pickup holes here, I have a neck hole here, and I don't really wanna mill those in until later. So, cause I wanna mill through both of the top and this block to cut those parts. I don't wanna have to try to match them up when I'm gluing or any of that stuff. And really, I mean, that's that's kind of the thing that we've been talking about all along is you glue two pieces of wood together and then you cut through them. Or in fusion, you extrude a piece and then you cut through it. That's, that's really how everything is done. And it, that's how you make woodworking look clean. Um, you don't try to match up a glue joint perfectly or, you know, cut apart by hand perfectly. You glue two pieces together and then you cut through that glue joint and that's where you get a clean a clean look. So um, how do we do this, right? Um, so what, what you wanna do is you just wanna go down here in your timeline, you look down here on the bottom and when you right click, right click on these items, you can roll marker to history. So when I come back to here, check this out, I don't have any of those cutouts there. And now I, um, now, now we can mill this part, but we still have another complexity in that this is curved on both sides, right? So how do we cut that? So basically what I need to do is I need to make, um, I made my top and my back identical. So that's handy. Um, some people might argue that that's not genuine to the design. I kind of like a top and a back that are um, symmetric. Um, and that's just my preference. This isn't a perfect ES-335. This is my take on an ES-335. So, so uh, how are we going to mount this to the CNC machine? After we cut this profile and cut off this curvature, how are we gonna turn this over and mount it to the CNC machine? Essentially, we gotta make a jig, right? We just gotta make a plate that matches this contour that we can glue, we can tape uh, it down to the machine. So. What I like to do is I like to construct an offset plane and I'll just choose this XY plane here and we'll move it up randomly. Let's just go two inches. Um, create a sketch on that plane. Uh, well, so this is the one, um, let me get rid of that sketch. This is what the sketch that I made when I was preparing to do this. Okay, I'm just gonna hide it, but anyways, I'll, I'll remove that later or, or figure it out. Um, and once again, I'm gonna, after we're done with this uh, video, I will upload this uh, file to the Patreon page again. Um, 
just I've been trying to post as much stuff as I can there to keep you guys happy. There's a ton of instrument models on there. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, let me finish this up and we'll talk about it at the end. I, I have some really cool news on that front. So we've got a sketch here. Um, let's type P for project and just start projecting these lines around. Um, because it's a 3D face, we're going to have lots of little anomalous lines in here. Anomalous. I'm not even sure if that's a word. Okay, we got some interesting geometries in here, so I'm just trying to sort out which ones to select. And you can see these are projecting onto that uh, surface that we generated. Okay. So as you can see, it's not a continuous line. I've got a gap here somewhere. So we got to find that. and control V to paste out another version of this um, and then see I can see right there that's where the spot is um, and then I'm actually going to just delete all of these projected lines put this back in here I'm going to project in a single point I'm going to move this point to point from that point to this point. There we go. Now we've got it. Let's lock it up so it doesn't move around on us and finish sketch. So now I'm just going to extrude negative point seven five. That looks good. I can hide the sketch. And move this body down like I talked about before we're just going to intersect two bodies and then we're gonna cut them so we're here and then we use combine we're gonna target body that top one tool body the bottom one we want to make sure we keep tools and we want to make sure it's cut and there we go so now we have this jig right here and it's parametrically back in time so it'll still be like this. Well, I have a little thingamadoo right there. Get rid of that. There we go. Yeah. So now I can cut this on the CNC machine, cut that other part on the CNC, cut this part on the CNC machine, flip it over, and attach it to the CNC machine in a square fashion, and then I can surface this other side. Um, that's kind of the gist of what I'm talking about here. Um, if that doesn't make sense, just definitely leave me a comment. Um, but yeah, it's it's really just the parametric ability of the software is really fantastic. So um, now I can turn myself back to the original thing. I have a, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that because of these pocket holes here. But anyways, that's kind of the next step in setting up jigs for making this thing. Um, I'm not really sure what the next video is going to be. Um, I kind of just open up this file each time and see where we need to go. <laughs> um, uh, we're really getting to the point where I, it's mostly going to be out in the shop working and I don't know how to live stream that. I'm going to have to maybe figure out some way. Now I'm doing uh, inside here at my desktop with Fusion 360 and OBS and um, you know, I, I like the clean look that I get from this kind of style, so I'm not sure if I want to go away from that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just have to figure out something as far as how we're going to proceed with this series. But anyways, oh, in, in uh, good news, uh, I got an email today from one of the guys. So when I started doing the Guaneri model on the violin, um, I had uh, a lot of people interested in that file, and that's when I decided to kind of start doing the Patreon thing. But um, he approached, he contacted me and said, "Hey, I, you know, I'd like to send you a violin bow, bow in exchange for that model." And I, you know, I, of course, I was happy to send him the model. 
and he sent me this beautiful violin bow that we'll do in the demo when we get the violin finished and he has made his own violin on the model on the model that we designed and it looks awesome um i hope i get to hear it at some point um if you're not on instagram check that out i'll, I'll probably post his picture of his uh violin and it looks great um and you know like like mine it's not perfect but really i mean who wants a perfect violin <laughs> maybe somebody does um uh, and you know there's certainly that's certainly a goal to to look towards but um yeah it's a beautiful thing check it out um thanks for watching guys thanks for checking us out um really appreciate the likes and the views and uh, the subscriptions um uh definitely check it out this es335 we're going to be giving away so um there haven't who's a really good picker and also really needs a nice instrument <laughs> so that's the goal um check it out thanks for watching and we will catch you guys next time